Good morning. It is morning, indeed. It's, I think it's 9am. And I thought, what better thing to do with my day than to start off by talking to you about books because it's been a while, hasn't it? It probably hasn't. It might have been. Time ceased existence. What's beeping at me? My washing machine. Well, I should preface this by saying hi, I'm Dakota and I write books and read books because I'm about to tell a little story before I dive into talking about the books that I've accumulated, acquired, all of those words as of late and want to read upcoming next. But I just finished all of the edits on my novel, like this round of edits at least. I mean, this is a pretty big round of edits, so I finished that, which means that now I've suddenly got all my spare time back and I've also got my mentality back because when I'm writing my novel, I couldn't really read other novels because I find the worlds would inherently blur and I'd kind of feed some of that into my own writing and can't have that, can't have that whatsoever. So I've been on like a real, this year, more than anything, I've been on a real non-fic uh, boost, more poetry, more non-fiction, more essays, more memoirs, more biographies, uh, even last year as well. But now that that's out of the way, writing the novel, I don't want to say it's like completely finished because I'm sure once once the bio reads it. I don't know how to word this because I don't really know how it happens. This is what my beautiful agent is for. Once, you know, there's going to be a few more edits, I'm sure, line edits and that thing, so forth, as it gets sold. I've finished that edit, so now I'm back, and now I'm back, and I'm alive, and I can read fiction again. Is what I'm, all of that just to tell you that I can read fiction again. But do you think that I've bought fiction? No. Okay, it's mostly non-fic mostly, but there's still some fiction there. But I'm now back, I can now go back into it, but I fear that now my taste has changed, or well, my preferences have changed, because I really do enjoy a good piece of non-fiction. But that's why I'm here, because I can recommend you both. Back to the start, I'm yapping. These are the books that I have acquired as of late. These beautiful books here. I, it's probably compared to my other hauls, it's probably not many, but this is stretching over a pretty long course of time since my last haul, I suppose, but not including the books that I've already read, except for one, because I still want to talk about that. Um, but you know, I've been consuming more consciously, and also I've been writing a lot more, and I'm very aware of my capacities for reading, so it's less. And so this is a smaller haul, but it's a very, it's a very intentional haul. Very intentional books I've accumulated as of late to read, hopefully over autumn. Happy autumn, by the way. World's longest introduction. I'm so sorry. I hope you like to chat because I'm feeling chatty. <laughs> so here are the books. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about the books that I bought, why I bought them, why I want to read them, what they are, and if you might like them too. <laughs> I've worked with Squarespace many times before and I adore Squarespace because it is a platform that makes the whole process of creating and maintaining websites so seamless and dare I say enjoyable. I say this from personal experience because I wanted to give back to my community who support my creative endeavors. So I built an online literary and arts journal slash lovely little arts community via Squarespace. You can submit your poetry, fiction, art, and essays to me based on the monthly prompts and I just might publish your work. Squarespace is so great for turning passion projects into professional projects and morphing dreams and concepts into tangible realities. This is done simply by the Fluid Engine Design System and Squarespace Blueprint, which is a guided design system to assist you in crafting a completely personalized website. There's elements I'm excited to eventually incorporate, like an online store with flexible payments. It's all so fun and easy to design, and you can so easily set up your own site too. Head to squarespace.com slash Dakota Warren to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Dakota Warren. The first book I have already talked about, I'm so cozy in my big sweater. I haven't worn this sweater since last season, and it's so nice to just be able to put a big, a big knit chunky sweater back on. Feels so good. And have a cup of tea. Doesn't this feel amazing? Again, I've gotten sidetracked and now I have something in my eye. <laughs> I need a moment to compose myself. <laughs> First book that I acquired that I have already spoken about is Louise Bourgeois by Oof Kuster. Um, my pronunciation for all of that will be awful. We know this. You watch my videos for the content, not the pronunciation. I have an awful accent that cannot do anything apart from butt naked English. This is a biography. 
of Louise, one of my favorite artists, if you don't know who Louise is. I have spoken, I have finished this book and I have read it, so I'm gonna give you a really quick skip over this because I covered it in one of my last ra reading wrap ups. But Louise is one of my favorite artists of all time. She's passed now, bless her, but she left behind such an incredible legacy. Her work explores. It's very, it's just so, it's so human, it's so guttural, it's so womanly. It comes from this real core of trauma, but she makes it into something so beautiful and her textures and her, just everything is just really wonderful and I recommend you look into her works. Once you've explored her works and you're interested in her as a person, which I'm sure you will be because you can't really be interested in the art without being interested in the artist, the age-old debate, uh, I recommend this biography. I've read a few biographies of hers and this was really quite concise and to the point and succinct. Succinct, is that the right word? The next books um, I picked up in New York. So I will cover the books that I got in New York and then I'll go back to the books that I did not get in New York. But I got three books in New York. I got more than three books in New York but they were all gifts for everybody because the bookstores, there's this one particular chain, McNally Jackson. Brilliant, the curation is absolutely phenomenal. I wanted everything, and I did get everything, but it was gifts. And now I'm wishing I'd doubled up on everything and kept it for myself, because wow. What do you mean? They were really incredible. Anyway, from McNally Jackson, I got these two books here. One is... Let's start with Manifestos of Surrealism by... Renef I said that so quickly, didn't I? Manifestos of Surrealism. I really do speed up my words. I am quite caffeinated. Andre Breton. If you were a regular watcher on this channel you will know that I am a big fan of the surrealism movement and a big fan of those who led it and pioneered it. A big fan I say not about them as people. Oh it's so annoying always having to clarify every single video. I don't support their morality and all those things. I just like their art. That aside, this is his manifesto of surrealism. Mandre Breton, the father of surrealism if you will, wrote this and it's all about surrealism, what it means, who it's for, what it does, and I want to read it. And so I'm going to read it because there was a point earlier in the year where I got really, really, really interested and quite deep into surrealism and I could never get my hands on this anywhere, even ordering online. I could only find copies for like triple the price because they'd have to come in from all sorts of places. Went to New York, went to McNally Jackson, first bookstore I walked into well, by chance. And this is just on the shelf for $20. What do you mean? Anyway, I'm really excited to read this. Realism is a movement, an art movement. I'm, I've, covered it, I've covered it so many times, I don't need to go into it. Google it. I talk about it way too much. <laughs> you're, probably, you're all probably so sick of, oh, she's talking about surrealism again. Oh, she's talking about religion again. Oh, she's talking about this particular metaphor again. The next book that I got is called We the Parasites. And this is by A.V. Maraccini. Pretty cool cover. It's very, uh, it's very punk. <laughs> and this, okay, this is yet another blurb that's going to steal you. And it reminded me a lot of this book here, uh, Love Bug. That was so convenient, wasn't it? Having a bookshelf is really quite wonderful. Love Bug by Daisy Lafarge. And I have talked about this in previous videos, but, um, oh. back in she goes. They're not similar concepts, but they're in the same realm for me. This is this blurb, just listen to this. This book basically, it's the debut book as well. What an incredible debut book. Well, I haven't read it yet, but an incredible debut book. Um, the author explores how we inhabit works of art and how our sense of belonging, longing, sorry, informs and changes our relationship with them. She uses a bunch of examples such as fig wasps and then a bunch of great authors and artists and everything. And a vividly rendered panoply of histories and myths from classical antiquity with the parasites both tells a strange love story and makes a slantwise argument about reading with the body and what it ultimately means to know and to want. Isn't that absolutely insane? Just that as a concept itself. And then I flicked through and I've read some things and wow, 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 wow. I've started reading it in New York, but I've not finished reading it. But there's this one, this is one of the opening lines and it says, but I'm not the fig. Um, a context, the way that figs are fertilized is a wasp uh, crawls into them and fertilizes them and then kind of dies in there and disintegrates and becomes a part of the fig and it's this whole, it's this beautiful process, it's this whole gorgeous, is it symbiosis? I don't know, but it's this gorgeous process and you're not eating, it's a misconception, you're not actually, every time you eat a fig you're not biting into the wasp, the wasp is no longer a wasp, the wasp is completely broken down and become part of the fruit, it's not don't worry about that, but this is this is what it says. But I'm not the fig, I'm the wasp. 
I burrow into sweet, dark places of fusindity, fusundity. I never know how to say that. You know when you've never heard a word out loud before, but you read it? Yeah. Into novels and paintings and poems and architectures, and I make them my own. I write criticism, I lay in little translucent eggs. Caprification. Caprification. Caprification, incredible word. Phonetically pleasing and has a great meaning. But that's this, I'm very excited to read it. The final book that I got in New York for myself, I'm so sad about this, I wish I got more, but also I had a certain amount of luggage and it was this whole thing and <sighs> no regrets, no regrets, I'll just go back. Um, this is a Paris review. This is a summer, I'm pretty sure, yeah, summer 2024 Paris review. And I got this from the Momo Library? I hear it from the Momo Library. I'm not the Momo Library, so the Momo gift shop, but um, I rarely come across the actual Paris review. Usually when I want to read the Paris review, I have to order it or go to like a special, um, a specialty store or like a, you know, not many random bookstores just stock it. But I found it there. And so I thought, great, brilliant, perfect. And then I flicked through and I, happened to pass some fragments of poetry and that kind of thing that took me in. So I'm excited to read this now that summer's over. It's kind of like a ceremonial end to summer. Everything just kind of ceased and fell into itself in the form of this Paris Review book. Which is also, I'm sorry, I'm just assuming you know what the Paris Review is. It's a collection of uh, prose, interviews, poetry, art, that kind of thing, all curated. <laughs> the next two books that I got back onto the theme of surrealism. Is she gonna get, ever gonna get over surrealism? Probably not. I don't know why they, I don't know why surrealism impacted me so much or why I relate to it so much, but I do. You know, it's like the study of subconscious and using that as a means of exploring emotion and everything else going on in the world. And I think that's really beautiful, using dreams and that kind of thing as a metaphor. <laughs> anyway, these are the next two books. Uh, shouldn't have done that. Andre Breton, Mad Love, translated by Mary Ann Kors. This is, so I read, one of my favorite novels of all time, in my top five for sure, is Andre Breton's Nadia. And this is controversial. I didn't realize it was controversial because I read it and thought, this is brilliant. Oh my goodness, everyone needs to read this, incredible. Everyone I told to read it, half the people came back and were like, you changed my life, incredible book, absolutely adore this. Half the people came back and said, what is this about? This is weird, I don't get it. It's because it's a surrealist novel. But um, this is his other novel, Mad Love. And I want to read it. I've not read it yet. I've flicked through and I've started reading it like six times, but then because it's fiction and because it's a novel and because it's about, you know, love and madness, which is very much similar to what my novel's about, I couldn't dive into it and give myself to it completely without <sighs> refraining a little bit. And so I can now dive into this without inhibition and tell you what it's about once I've read it. I think I'm going to love it. I know I'm going to love it. Mad Love has been acknowledged an undisputed classic of the Surrealist movement since its first publication in France in 1937. Its adulation of love as both mystery and revelation places it in the most abiding of literary traditions, but its stormy history and technical difficulty have prevented it from being translated into English until now. There has never been any forbidden fruit, only temptation is divine, writes André Breton, leader of the Surrealists in Paris in the 1920s and 30s. Mad Love is dedicated to defying the widespread opinion that love wears out like the diamond in its own dust. Celebrating Breton's own love and lover, this book unveils the marvelous in everyday encounters and the hidden depths of ordinary things. Doesn't that just sound incredible? I know I'm gonna love that. I don't know that's gonna be in my top 10. If it's not, I'll report back to you. The next book that I got, this is Diary of a Genius. Salvador Dali. This is Salvador Dali's own personal writings. Uh, which is really cool, like it's literally his diary, Salvador Dali's diaries. Salvador Dali is one of the pioneer artists in the Surrealist movement. <laughs> um, Dali's paintings reveal in the most powerful form the basic elements of the Surrealist imagination, a series of equations for dealing with the extraordinary transformations of our age. Let us salute this unique genius who has encountered for the first time the multiplication tables of obsession, psychopathology, and possibility. This stands, Diary of a Genius, stands as one of the seminal texts of surrealism, um, and so forth. And so I want to read this because it's, it's, it looks like it's gonna be really interesting. It could probably also be awful because, I don't know, the word genius is just thrown around so much. And yes, I'm sure his art is incredible and, dare I say, genius. Diary of a Genius? 
let's see how that goes. <laughs> I hope it gives some uh, context and some insight into the world at that time rather than just his mind because I love when things are set. That's why I love, for example, let me think of an example, Hemingway's A Movable Feast. I love that it's about him and his core and his writing and his art, but also so much just about Paris at that time. I want to be present there. One day I'm going to publish all of my journals about living in London and trying to balance being a filthy party girl and writing 50% each. <laughs> but that time is not now. I think I mentioned this in a recent haul video, but I'm mentioning it again. If I did, I'm mentioning it again because I'm going to be reading it very soon this autumn because it's inherently informing a project that I'm working on now that my novel's uh, elsewhere. And I, uh, if I have talked about it, I'm sorry, but I'm going to talk about it again because I can't remember, but it's important to me. This is just a screenplay. This is a script to Bonnie and Clyde, 1967, one of my favourite films of all time and very closely intertwined with a project I am working on, which I cannot give you any more information about. I'm so sorry. You'll find out eventually. It's very old, it smells so good because it's so old. I think I said that in the last video as well, is how good it smells, but it's also got some little pictures. It's... Yeah, I'm excited to have the script for that. Whenever I really love a film, if I really, really, really fall for a film, I do try and seek out the screenplay in the script because I like to have I, like to, I, just, I just think it's important and I like to really appreciate because when something's visually gorgeous I like to appreciate the words as well and as, as a reader and a writer I tend to want to separate the words to absorb them more as well. Anyway, the last book that I want to read in autumn slash accumulated slash acquired recently slash was sent also recently uh, is this coverless because this is an arc of uh, What a Time to Be Alive by Jenny Mustard. Do you remember around this time last year, it was much early last year actually, probably June or July, where Jenny released OK Days and I was lucky enough to chair the interview launch for that and read the book and get a real behind the scenes and pick her brain on that and then become quite close to Jenny who was an absolute brilliant incredible writer, just person in general. This is an arc of her soon-to-be-released book, not soon-to-be-released, it's out April 2025, so it's not soon-to-be-released, <laughs> it will be released eventually. But this is her next book. The first one went so well, was so wonderful, and I recommend that also if you haven't read it. And this is the next one, and I'm... She sent me this a few months ago, maybe even, very, very far in advance. Thank you so much, Jenny. But I haven't had a chance to read it because A, I've been working on my own novel, B, I haven't been able to devote myself fully and because she means so much to me, I want to be able to do that. I don't know what this is about. I can't tell you what this is about. I can't tell you until April 2025, but just know that I am so excited to read this and it's going to be so hard to contain this within myself until then. But, Jenny, if you're watching this, I love you. I don't know if you watch my videos. I never know if my actual friends watch my videos or if... They don't, but then sometimes I'll get a text, I'll tell a story about a friend, and I'll get a text saying, ah, oh, have you told the story? And then it's kind of, I kind of worry. No, don't watch my videos. This, no, <laughs> just know me in real life, don't watch my videos. That's, I don't know why that freaks me out so much. Anyway, I guess I'm gonna finish this with a story because this is a real life story. By the way, I'm gonna tell you a story just because I wanna tell someone. Today's the first day that I've been out of my novel writing binge. Uh, because it was, it's was, it been fashion month, uh, so it's event season. Every single day there's some kind of event to go to. And I'm very lucky that I get to go to these things because they're so much fun and I love this world and I love my friends and I love to party. Arrest me officer, I like to have a good time. My tea's going cold, sorry, hold that thought. Let's table that. <laughs> and so that was a very, very busy season. But I also had edits that I had to be doing for my novel. And I couldn't really do them because it was so busy and every time I'd get stuck into it I'd spend a day doing it and then have the next three days where I couldn't do it because there was things on and then I'd lose where I was up to and I just couldn't get back into it and it was this really awful kind of tricky place. But then when I got back from New York after after Fashion Week particularly, under, after London Fashion Week, I knew that I had to get this done and get it submitted and I had a bit to go and I wanted to do one more read through. The novel was like 350 pages on the on the document I don't know how many it will be in book but it's 350 pages and I have to had to read that upwards of a hundred times I think I read it five times just over the course of the weekend 
just going through it and going through it and going through it and going through that. I could perform this novel verbatim without reading it from the first chapter until the last chapter because I've read it so many times. It's kind of crazy. I never want to see it again after this, but I'm, I do, obviously. Uh, and so I bought it myself up over the weekend. And by weekend, I mean Thursday through to Monday. So weekend plus a couple weekdays. Bought it myself up in my flat. And because I get very... I'm outing myself. I get very uh, particular when I have a task that has to be done. I want to do it a particular way. I get very militant about it. The self-discipline is either nothing or everything. And when I really need to do something to do a task, I prioritize that task over everything. So I didn't leave my flat for like the entire five days. Uh, I made before I decided to go into the writing binge, the editing binge, I should say, because it's all written. I decided to, I made a big tray of lasagna a big tray of lasagna and I put it in the fridge and then for the entire five days for every single meal I was wasn't even I was just getting a fork and just scooping out lasagna from the big tray until I was satiated and then I just go back to writing and then I did it for breakfast lunch and dinner <laughs> basically and then I realized I, was, I thought oh I haven't had any vegetables in a bit and so I ran down to the supermarket I grabbed a bag of pre-shredded kale and I was just eating between writing and editing I was just eating fistfuls of kale with my hands to get sustenance and nutrients living off black coffee and then I had an incident where I dropped my french press that infuses the coffee grounds I dropped it and it shattered, and so I didn't have a French press to infuse my coffee grounds. But see, I was doing my novel, I was doing my task, and I couldn't distract myself by going to go get a French press because that would take me away from my novel in my insane head. I couldn't even do dishes or anything for the entire five days because that was a task and that would take me away from my novel in my insane head. Uh, and so I was, just, uh, I, was, I, was on the, I was on the dregs of everything. I had to make cappuccinos out of coffee bowls. I mean, sorry, not coffee bowls. I had to make cappuccinos out of bowls, fruit bowls, and I was I was drinking I was drinking my water out of jam jars because I was in the dregs of dishes, but I couldn't do any other task. Anyway, the French press incident, uh, I I couldn't get a new French press and so I started to try and get really crafty, which is just another task in itself, but in my head it's not. So I had to get really crafty and so I got I was infusing the coffee grounds in boiling water by just I I emptied tea bags. I was putting coffee grounds in tea bags and I was just doing insane things because I couldn't leave my flat to get a French press or anything. Insane. But anyway, I'm out of that now. And it was crazy as well because I couldn't clean my flat. I wasn't making mess because I was just sitting in the one spot editing. I was going between bed, table, desk, bed, table, desk, bed, table, desk. Like, if you watched me for that course of five days on like a GoPro or in some camera in the corner on 100 times speed, it would look like I am a, like a rat in, a, in some kind of science experiment. <laughs> Kind of crazy. Uh, and then I came to, after I pressed, press send, press send to my agent, closed my laptop, came to, like that real like, oh, awakening, that sudden consciousness. I look around me at my flat and what I've been living in, just like this tray of lasagna with scoops out of it, fistfuls of kale, oh, oh, like every single dish in my house, in the sink, dirty, everything insane. Myself, my own appearance, I didn't look in a mirror for five days, my own appearance was crazy. I've never seen myself like that and I hope to never see myself like that again. That did awful things for my <laughs> for my for my self-image. <laughs> that was that did awful things for my mental health. But we're back and I'm present. And I now have more time to do things such as other projects and make more videos and talk to you more often and spend more time together. So I'm looking forward to that. I have missed all of this very much so and I, I suppose it's a matter of time until I get sucked back into another project and go all scary about it. Draconian project girl. I just wanted to tell you that really long-winded way of saying I'm back. And for now. <laughs> on that note, I'm gonna go work on another project. <laughs> I love you a lot. Those are the books that I hope to read in autumn slash have accumulated as of late slash I'm excited to tell you about because I'm excited to read them and I suppose I like to tell you in advance the books that I would like to read or have collected because I know that some of you are interested just by blurbs and are interested in the books that I want to read anyway but it also gives you a chance to kind of get them and read them and then we can kind of talk about them at the same pace and review them together I suppose I like that anyway I love you a lot I'll see you next time <laughs>